Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, I'll be talking about the difference between topoisomerase type 1 and topoisomerase type 2. And uh, there are some little confusion uh, from my students I get all the time regarding the topoisomerase functionality and stuff and then nomenclature and stuff and classification. So I'm going to talk about all those things in a brief way in this video. Now both of these things, what is topoisomerase in the first place? Obviously it is an enzyme, right? It is an isomerase enzyme that modifies structure, right? And it is related to the changing of topology of the DNA structure. That is why we call it an isomerase enzyme that helps to change the DNA topology. So we call it topoisomerase enzyme. Now there are majorly two versions of topoisomerase enzyme that we know of topoisomerase type 1 and topoisomerase type 2 and among those type 1 and type 2 there are some differentiation as well there are different example of enzymes um, placed among those groups but here when we talk about topoisomerase 1 we means topoisomerase type 1 and topoisomerase type 2 so in the first place I, I must talk about the classification in a brief way where there leads to confusions so topoisomerase type 1 and topoisomerase type 2. Now what happens actually uh, in further study what we found out that in topoisomerase type 1 we have two different types like topoisomerase 1A and topoisomerase 2A. Okay. In type 2 we have topoisomerase 3 and topoisomerase 4. Okay. So, these are the major difference that we know of like topoisomerase uh, 1 among topoisomerase 1 we have topoisomerase 1A and 2A uh, and type 2 have topoisomerase 3 and topoisomerase 4 as an example. Okay? So, that is the confusion normally. Among type 2 we have only 3 uh, the name of topoisomerase will be topo 3 and topo 4 among type 1 the name is topo 1 and topo 2. So, <coughs> So, if this is not that important to understand, but the thing you need to understand is the functionality of this topoisomerase 1 and 2 and why we require two different types of topoisomerase in that case. Now, I must tell you all of these topoisomerase, most of them, they require a metal factor for their enzyme activity, right? A metal, an ion they require for their enzymatic activity. Another thing is that some of them require ATP, some of them may not, but ATP's presence is very important for all this process of topoisomerase activity because it is changing the structure of the DNA. And the major function of topoisomerase enzyme is, is to unwind the DNA or rewind the DNA. That means kind of underwinding the DNA or overwound the DNA. Now what does it mean by underwound and overwounding? So let me talk about it. You know the DNA structure, if you look at the DNA structure, it is the double helix. The structure looks something like this, the double helix structure it wrapped around one another. And we know normally when we talk about the DNA which is linear, that is not much difficult. But if we talk about a circular DNA, uh, what happens actually uh, during the process, normally the DNA is present in a circular form. Let us say that the same way, let me draw, it is a kind of challenge to draw in the circle form right here. I do not know. Anyway, so let us say whatever. Let us say this is a circular form of the DNA. Now, the DNA normally resides there as it is in a, in a natural state. Now, the idea is all those cases, whatever thing, whatever molecule you are looking at, they always tend to present in the stabilized format, energetically favorable structure and format in shape, obviously. They do not want to be stressed. Nobody want to get into stress. Now, in this case, what happens normally when the, when the circular DNA is present? In this case, we are talking about bacteria. Let us say in, in case of E. coli, we are talking about. about. And let us say we are talking about topoisomerase type 1 and what is its importance here. So, normally the circular DNA is present in, in, the, in the cell. Now, the idea is normally when the DNA is present, there is no problem because DNA is present in its, uh, in its energetically favorable structure. But now let us say we want to unwind the DNA. Why? Because we want to go for DNA replication or transcription. These are the events that we obviously need to go through for a DNA. DNA replication should be done, transcription of the DNA should be made to uh, produce mRNA. So those things are required, these are the physiological processes, the cellular processes that should be carried out inside the cell for the cell to live. Now that time creates the problem. So because why? Because we need to unwind the DNA, because we need to separate the two DNA strands 
from each other. So, before that we need to untwist the DNA first, right? Because it is a twisted ladder. We need to untwist it to make a straight format of the ladder. Then we can separate the strands. Now, in this case, in those process, the only way to do it is to open it up, right? So, if you just think of this, to, this DNA as a rope like thing, you, what you will do? You will turn it in the opposite direction so that uh, those linking regions, those, those uh, linking regions will open up and straighten. For example, you open it in a such a way that this part or let us say, yes, this there is a one linking area here, that area will open up. So, the same way you did, it opens up a little bit. But while you are opening it up, you know, all these linking numbers, you are opening it up creating pressure here. That is going to put the DNA into enormous strain, structural strain, right? And you know the whole DNA is joined, so that pressure you apply to open it or unwind it will not be released by any of the regions because it is completely closed. The DNA is not free at any location. That creates tension in the DNA, stress in the DNA. So, the more let us say you start DNA replication here, the more you move, the more stress you are going to create in this upstream regions. So, it is going to create knot, they are going to be so strained, they are going to rewind in between themselves and form knot. So, DNA will form knots and DNA polymerase cannot move through those knots. So, the DNA replication will be halted, it should not be carried out. So, what is the solution for it? The only way to release this tension is to cut the DNA in somewhere. If you cut at least one strand of the DNA, what it can do? It can release that tension because, because if you cut the DNA in one strand, you can easily take that strand of the DNA and put it on top of other one and rejoin it. So, it will release the tension, right? Just think of it, this whole idea about, about uh, like te telephone wire. You take the telephone wire, it is already twisted. Now, if you do the twist again and again, you will see start uh, wounding on themselves again to forming a knot. Same thing here, you cut the DNA, you take, so let us say here, this is the this is the format where there is a tension. So, what you will do, you will cut this stand, you pass this this first stand, cut, cut let us say cut this stand and take pass this stand through that and let re it. So, previously it was like that, now it will be releasing the tension. So, you will have the releasing portion of the DNA in between. That is the same thing going on in this case. That is one way to release the tension and topoisomer is one type 1 is involved with this process. Okay? Topoisomerase type 1 actually uh, releases this type of single stranded uh, DNA and it, it cuts one of the strand of the DNA and pass it through another one and re-ligate it. Right? So, if I write in the topoisomerase 1 type 1 cut single strand then pass another strand through that nick and third joins the nick with the help of enzyme called ligase and in this case actually they do not need ligase they can do their job on this own. So, topoisomer is type 1 can do this job on its own. So, it is a process of DNA ligation that is also performed by this enzyme itself. So, this is the job of topoisomerase 1. So, in bacterial uh, cell, if you look at topoisomerase type 1 functionality, mostly they what they do is actually they, they uh, release the negative supercoiling. You know, supercoiling means that knot that formed. Uh, normal coiling means when a DNA is wrapped around two different strands wrapped around one another, this is normal type of coiling. Now, when this coiled DNA is further twisted and forming knot, that is known as super coiling and that is released by this topoisomerase 1. In this case of type 1 topoisomerases, generally release the tension of negative super coiling and one unit. So, release negative super coiling by one unit here because it cuts only one stand, one unit is released at a time. On the other hand, if you talk about the type topoisomerase type 2, again uh, here also we are talking about 
the example in bacteria and one such example is DNA gyrus this is an enzyme uh, of bacteria E. coli that helps in the process of again uh, during it, it is re immensely required in the process of the uh, producing negative supercoiling and uh, during the process of DNA replication in E. coli. Now in topoisomerase type 2 example gyrus this type 2 topoisomerase have some more functionality to perform okay now in type 2 topoisomerase have a this specific like structures if I draw like something I don't know uh, I'm just drawing a hypothetical uh, like uh, schematic presentations here only and let's see here like that something like this now what it does actually this is a structure two identical subunits are joined together to make the structure and there is a region called ATP binding site which is here and this is the DNA binding site. So what it do, does actually in this case this topoisomerase type 2 example gyrus it can cut both the DNA strands okay, and pass another double stranded DNA through it and can join that. For example, if I tell you one simple uh, let us say another complicated drawing I have to draw for you here. Let me draw it first something like this. like this sorry for example say it is not a good drawing though but just try to assume that I told you this is a super coil of the DNA because you know earlier here you see only a simple DNA but this is super coil DNA because the double stranded DNA is further twisted in two regions here normally when a DNA is coiled uh, two strands are coiled upon another this we known uh, this regions we known as as a twist right DNA twist but when uh, the super coil is formed and the regions where they form the super coil we call them writhe okay so if you look at here this topoisomerase type 2 what it can do is it can cut so it's completely joined it's completely wrapped around it's a super coil dna this is a super coil condition where they need to re rewind it like unwound it so this is a positive format of the super coiling the positive format of the super coiling but while we are doing the process like when we are unwinding the dna for dna replication and transcription we need to unwound this positive coiling so the only way to do that is introducing negative supercoiling there. So if you introduce the opposite side supercoiling, a negative supercoiling, that is going to release the tension. So the job of topoisomerase type two here, the example is gyrus or gyrus, whatever you say. It will introduce negative supercoiling by two unit. Okay. So what it will do, it will cleave one of the strand, pass the other, it will cleave the one, one both the strands of the DNA, pass the whole other double stranded DNA through it and re-ligate it. So after the activity of this gyrus, the structure will become something like this, not, not like this but actually let us say previously the structures was something like that now the structure will become like this you understand the process previously this strand was in the back side this one in the front but now this will be in the front this will be in the back got the idea it is kind of hard to explain with a two dimensional board but this is the idea it changes the way the coiling was there and it, once you change it you can simply drag it out and you will get a bigger portion of the uh, the coiling opens up like that so this is the idea of topoisomerase type 2 now in that case it will hold on to the target strand to be cleaved and that strand will be placed somewhere here in this area and it will take the other strand let us say this is the other strand 
it will pass this other strand through this because it will cleave this is one DNA strand this is both the strands of the DNA so one DNA and this is the target DNA to be passed so it will cleave both the strands of the DNA take and pass the other strand through that gap and then re-ligate that other DNA okay now for this process they require two units of ATP and this is the ATP binding site as I told you ATP will be attached once the ATP is attached they will undergo some structural changes as a result of that structural changes uh, it will help in the cleave cleavage process then it will uh, pass the DNA through it and then re-ligate. it so the difference you know in case of topoisomerase type 1 only one strand is cleaved in topoisomerase type 2 two strands are cleaved so both the strands of the DNA are cleaved it introduces negative coiling in two units while it kind of releases the tension of negative coiling uh, by one unit so that is a major difference between topoisomerase type 1 and topoisomerase type 2 it requires much more ATP compared to the type 1 so the idea you know in both this case I'm uh, in this video I'm not talking about the detailed mechanism of how they work I just talk about the summary of the differences if you want to talk about more about how topoisomerase 1 and 2 functions differently I will recommend you to watch my other video regarding topoisomerase 1 and topoisomerase type 2 separately to know about their function so this in a sense is the difference between topoisomerase 1 and topoisomerase 2 if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this and definitely share this video with your friends thank you